Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. Today's module will cover limit feeding of dairy heifers. Let's review our learning objectives for this module. By the time we're finished, you should be able to, one, discuss the benefits of limit feeding heifers, two, describe two common approaches to limit feeding heifers, and then finally identify two key management tools in monitoring heifers that are on a limit feeding program. The first question might be, well, why is there an interest in limit feeding? This seems a bit unusual. Well, we're going to restrict dry matter intake in many cases because of where heifers are being housed. Historically, heifers were on pasture-based systems. However, today we see many more heifers raised on confinement. This leads to a second problem, that is heavy heifers. And we know the metabolic problems and risks we have with heavy or fat heifers. Of course, another important aspect is anytime we can reduce feed costs, that is always going to be a plus as feed costs continue to escalate. And finally, of course, there's an interest in the carbon footprint in terms of how much carbon or greenhouse gases heifers are coming from the heifer enterprise. We'll examine two approaches. The first one is to limit dry matter intake, especially on farms where there's high quality forages based on the feeds to control energy intake. We'll call that the Wisconsin approach. The second one we'll briefly examine comes from Penn State, and this is the use of higher grain diets to reduce feed intake, especially if grains and byproduct feeds are favorably priced. Let's take a look at the Wisconsin plan, and that is to limit feed intake primarily because of its impact and availability of high-quality forages on farms here in the U.S. The data you'll see has been provided by Pat Hoffman at the University of Wisconsin. You will see several tables like this. Let's briefly explain what we have here. You see the in the orange, C100 means the control diet. This is what cattle would consume or heifers would consume free choice. R means we're going to restrict that feed intake to 90% of the control, and then R80 refers to 80%. You can see the dry matter intakes listed over here. The next PowerPoint will indicate to you the type of heifers we're feeding. So you can see the dry matter intake restrictions that occurred. An important point is look at the second line under CP, stand for crude protein. Notice we maintain the crude protein intake as well as some of the minerals. So on a limit feeding program, we have to meet the nutrient requirements. However, we get that in a smaller package or a small amount of dry matter per se. If we go down to the green section at the bottom, you can see the energy values, how they have changed. We express these both in terms of TDN and also net energy gain, net energy maintenance. So we are feeding these heifers a lower energy diet. This rather busy slide describes the heifers that were raised. You can see these are very large heifers. These are heifers getting close to calving or older heifers. So you can see the initial weights, initial heights, body condition scores, the final. You can study that a bit later if you want or print this off. Let's go down to the the, the bottom line, as we'd say, and that's the green section, the growth area. Notice the average daily gains right on the money. In fact, slightly better with the restricted diets. While these are not statistically significant, certainly these heifers have grown very well. Notice the second line, feed efficiency, a critical value here in dairy farming nowadays. And you can see we have a greater efficiency, meaning it takes less feed per pound of gain. And of course, we look at manure management and greenhouse gases and, and the amount of feed required for these animals. You can see that we have less manure produced by these animals as well. Of course, you'll see that these animals' behavior does change. You can see the percent of time eating is greatly restricted or certainly drops down by the heifers. Be aware of that. Certainly that means there's going to be some feed bunk management issues you're going to have to deal with at this point. Uh, Notice they get sometimes quite loud. In other words, these heifers get hungry, especially when they're fed usually once a day and the feed intake and feed is consumed rather quickly. You can see the eating time in terms of hours are reduced. And of course, the amount of lying time changes slightly. So there's a behavioral change in these heifers as well. Perhaps as a dairy farmer, one of the questions they would raise as a manager, and that is, well, what impact does it have on production? And again, you can see in this first uh, 305-day extended records, you can see that there is no difference in milk production. In fact, if anything, there's a slight trend to even a little bit higher milk production, which may reflect certainly the different growth patterns in these animals. So this is really good news all the way along. Now let's look at the second system, primarily worked by Judd Heinrich at Penn State University, looking at limiting feed intake but using a grain-based ration. 
Again, the high concentrate diets, you can see, will be limit feeding the, the grain portions. By adding more grain, we have to feed less total dry matter here. As a result, here are some take-home messages for that, this type of a diet. Because we're feeding higher concentrates and grains, we have a higher digestibility of organic matter and the NDF. So we're actually getting more nutrients per unit of dry matter consumed from these animals. There's a marked improvement in nitrogen efficiency, which means we capture more of it in terms of body tissue. Obviously, because they are eating less total feed and these feeds are richer or more digestible, there's a reduction in CAFO nutrient loads, which then, of course, leads to less manure being produced and less ammonia in the environment as well. Well, we've just looked at these two systems. What are some of the take-home messages that you must really be aware of if you're going to implement the system? This is a has to be very well managed. First of all, feed bunk space is critical. Since the feed is limited, all animals must have the opportunity to come to the bunk and consume the amount of feed that they have. Certainly, grouping would be equally as important to avoid bullying or certainly older heifers consuming and forcing feed away from the younger heifers. A nutrient intake is critical regardless of whichever system you go. Conventional, a limiting uh, intake due to forage quality or due to grain levels. Certainly the grams of minerals, the milligrams of trace minerals, the pounds of protein must be fed and must be met to get optimal growth. As we mentioned, a grouping of heifers will be critical. Generally, in younger heifers, we see a two-month range is about as all we can tolerate. Older heifers, three to four months. And once we get them in the pregnancy pens, we can tolerate a slightly more age differential. Number four, be aware of vocalization of the heifers. There may be some bawling occurred. And certainly, as a herd manager, you must be aware of this when you uh, work with your employees. Obviously, a huge factor is going to be feed costs. Uh, the bottom line is we can raise these heifers cheaper and get optimal growth, but well, certainly the cost of forages, grains, byproducts, so certain are going to be important. And as we know, these will change depending from year to year, depending on growing conditions and certainly the world market. And perhaps uh, the other key factor would be older heifers provide the greater opportunities because they eat more dry matter. Older heifers are probably looking at heifers certainly at breeding age and above at this stage of the game. So what are our take-home messages on this type of a feeding system? Well, certainly we want to monitor heifer growth and body condition to make sure we're getting the growth patterns we really want. These are important tools and we should be monitoring them. Second, we have to control dry matter intake. You have to be smarter than the heifer. You will have to have a computer-based program to ensure all nutrients are being met, but still getting it into an optimal package size. And certainly there are several management factors, such as grouping, uh, feed bunk space, environmental factors must be considered to make this program successful. Well, that completes our module for today. Thanks. Have a great day.